So in the summer of 2021, I had a very ridiculously itchy rash on my right breast. I had put some lotions on to see if that would help. And otherwise, I wasn't really that worried about it. Um, as time went on, it ended up getting worse, and nothing was really helping. So I thought, I had a thought come to my mind. And it's one that all women probably hear. And it says, uh, the thought was, if there's any noticeable changes in your breast, then you should go and get it checked out. And I was like, oh, maybe I should Google it. And you know what happens when you Google it? It's always cancer. <laughs> And this time it actually was. Um, so I Googled if the symptoms of a rash were a sign of breast cancer. And when I was reading the symptoms of um, it happened to pull up inflammatory breast cancer, I noticed that there were other signs that I also had that had, I hadn't noticed. Um, so I didn't notice that my right breast was actually a lot bigger than my left breast. And it was inflamed. And also there was some skin thickening that was like a pitted look and it resembled like an orange pill. And those are all three symptoms of inflammatory breast cancer. Um, so I made my appointment right away with my OBGYN and the doctor said that that was um, concerning when he examined me. And he said that I need to go get a mammogram as soon as possible and also find a breast surgeon. Um, it still didn't register that I probably had cancer. I think that I was kind of in denial. So I went to my first ever and last mammogram. <laughs> um, while the doctor was reviewing the scans, they had put me into a, a room. <sighs> And this was one of the rooms that you see in the movies. And it's the room that you know this is where they tell you that you have cancer. But because of COVID, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to bring anybody with me. And I couldn't believe that they just stuck me in this room all by myself. But I knew I wasn't by myself because I could feel my dad in the room. He had passed away just a year before. Oh, sorry. A few minutes later, they moved me on to the next room where I had to have an ultrasound. And they decided then and there to do three biopsies. So they did a skin surface one on the rash, then the deeper tissue where the pitted thickening was, and also a lymph node under my arm. No one could have prepared me for that call. Jolene, I'm sorry, but we found cancer in all three of the biopsies. And that's when I found out that I didn't just have the normal breast cancer. I had this rare and aggressive one, like I said, called inflammatory breast cancer, or IBC. I was 38 years old, and my daughter had just turned five. And, um, and I had two preteen step kids and all of which all of these kids needed me still. So whenever IBC is found, it's already at least a stage three because it spreads so fast. A lot of women are already stage four by the time of diagnosis. I was diagnosed as stage three C. Um, that thought to Google my symptoms, I can only credit to God as time was of the essence, and I believed it played a huge role in saving my life. Because it's such an aggressive cancer, it calls for an aggressive treatment, which includes chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation. Today, I have done six rounds of chemotherapy, a non-skin sparing double mastectomy, along with the removal of 14 lymph nodes and 30 radiation treatments. When I found out my diagnosis, and before my scans, I went through all of the thoughts that anybody would. How am I supposed to do this? What does God want me to learn from this? How long do I have to live? Has it spread anywhere else? But the hardest news that I received 
was because my cancer was driven by estrogen and HER2 um, protein. That also meant it would be very dangerous to have any more kids. It was heartbreaking. I knew I needed to have faith in whatever God intended for me. I would be able to get through it. And there would be purpose in my trials, and I just needed to take some steps forward in faith. I started to make changes, tried to be a better wife, mother, and stepmother. Whenever I got really hard, I tried to push my focus elsewhere and reach out to someone that would come to my mind. The, my load ended up feeling lighter, and my fight became something more than just surviving but to become a better person than I was when I started my journey. I tried to stay positive for the most part, but I couldn't have done this alone. One of the things that meant the most to me was the outreach of love and concern for my family, um, from family, coworkers, friends, and neighbors. I had a constant outreach of love, prayers, meals, gifts, Words of encouragement, texts, phone calls, letters, cards, flowers, blankets, hats, DoorDash gift cards, socks, supplies to survive chemo, games, and, and more. Week after week, um, all through my chemo treatments, there was not even one week that passed that I didn't receive something from someone. <clears throat> the thing that helped me the most was right before my second round of chemo, my sister Carrie, who couldn't be here today because she's not feeling very good, um, surprised me with a book of letters she put together for me. Um, she asked family, neighbors, current and old, and friends to write me a letter to read through my treatment. Um, but I didn't make it that far. I read them the morning before, and it was a good thing because I was bawling my eyes out. I still read those letters sometimes um, because, and it still touches me because it was such an act of true kindness. I couldn't believe that all these people that loved me were willing to take the time to give me courage and words of wisdom. There were a lot of them that told me what my friendship had meant to them and how much influence I had in their lives. I don't think they'll ever know their impact on me. It was truly an amazing blessing. During my chemo treatments, I was able to meet some amazing survivors. One of them, I will call her Kay, came over to me during my first round of chemo and gave me her phone number and told me to call her or text her anytime with questions as she was also doing her own chemo treatments for breast cancer. She was serious. Any time, day or night, she was there for me. She helped me get through chemo by constantly checking up on me, letting me ask any questions I wanted or needed, and we ended up becoming really good friends. We still talk, text, and get sushi. It makes a huge difference to be able to talk to someone that's gone through the same thing as you. I saw her courage and strength and it helped me to find my own to get through this. And at the same time, it was possible, I knew it was possible to be happy. The best advice that she'd given me was, make sure you do something that you love every day. I just finished my last immunotherapy infusion last month, and I'm planning on getting my port removed next month. Yay. <laughs> um, I, I remember thinking, I just want it to be a year later, and now here I am. There are still hard days, and I try my best. I even played volleyball again, and I look forward to feeling better and better. I know that I have been blessed and have seen God's hand through this trial. I'm so grateful for that and for him sending angels in my life, especially my husband, John, who is with me every step of the way. I am not my cancer. 